Good morning, Ruvain. Okay. All right. Where are we today? Besides in Boca Raton, Florida, right? <laughs> Some of us are still on the way. You know, yesterday when Marty's uh, got up and he said his flight was canceled. Marty Engel's flight yesterday. I assume he got was able to rebook himself, mm -hmm. but it warned me he was flying, uh, I think, Spirit, JetBlue. Jet I called, I had Karen call her son, okay? That was like uh, 11 o'clock. Oh, it's no problem, we're okay. You know, we've got our tickets, we've got a quarter to two. He calls us back. The flight was canceled out of, me, out of White Plains to come down here. He says, we're getting in the car. He says, our bags are all packed. We're getting in the car and we're driving. Wow, from White Plains? It's a 20 hour drive. Yeah. So you probably, you probably drove all night? You're close, Lord. I think they were stopping in Fayetteville, North Carolina, which is about halfway. You know, when you ask yourself, well, what would have been easier to, to go out and start cooking and everything one in a day and a half for Pesach to get in the car and, and come? Right? Okay. All right, I'm starting with the sponsors and then we'll go into the Gemara. Uh, Suanani, year of learning. Suanani, Gerlach, in memory of Malka Proman and Philip Mann. Yisrael David ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch and Beryl ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch. Yosef Meyer ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch and Henya Rivka Pro Rosna but Harav Tzvi Hirsch. In memory of family murdered in the Holocaust. Harav Tzvi Hirsch ben Shlomo Yaakov. Sarah Bat Ephraim, Yisrael David ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch. Ephraim ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Adiyah bat Harav Tzvi Hirsch. Miriam bat Harav Tzvi Hirsch. Pesel bat Harav Tzvi Hirsch. Shalom ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch. Shlomo Yaakov ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch. Shmuel ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch. Leslie and Gail Kaplan, in memory of their parents, Harry and Marjorie Sedell, Irving and Pearl Kaplan. Children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren of Toby Paris. Sarah Tova, but Yisrael Dove in her memory. Charlie Galfenstein and Sam Levine, in memory of Ramona Levine, Rachel Mata, but Asher. Friends of Nina Monester, Nechama Azna, but Yitzchak Aharon. Uh, many friends of Stephen Vigdor, Lezecher Nishmat, Simcha Melech, Ben Meir Leib Halevi. Friends of Marcy Kurtz, in memory of her great niece, Leah Bracha. The month of learning by Lydia and Abe Krauss's many friends in honor of their 50th anniversary by David and Mendel, Mendel Cheslow, in memory of his father, Moshe ben Ruvain Mordechai, by Susan and Ruvain Podolsky, in memory of her father, Simcha Bunim ben Yeshua. We have a week of learning by David and Sharon Karpel, and, and Rabbi Tzvi and Robin Karpel, in memory of David and Tzvi's mother, Malka Bas Mordechai, by Dr. Mark Sher. <coughs> In memory of his father, Mordechai ben Menachem Manus. Ruth Kosman, in memory of her husband, Shmuel ben Yitzchak. Carol and David Kaplan, in memory of Hannah and Ron Goldberg's daughter, Tamar Yenta Bad Yerachmiel Yitzchak. Judy Iger, in memory of her husband, Aaron ben Shlomo Mikhail. Henya and Shmuel Novik, in memory of her father, Zeb ben Shimshon. Mayor and Sarah Breben, Michael and Golda Breben. In memory of Mayor and Michael's mother, Bela Badeli Melech. Isaac and Ed Novik, in memory of his father, Eliezer Yaakov ben Mordechai Tzvi Alevashon. We have today a day of learning plus Torah fun. <laughs> no, today's the 14th, right? No. Today's the 15th. <clears throat> By Robin and Rabbi Tzvi Karpel, in memory of her mother, Chaya Edel Bas Menachem Zev. Also, we have. Uh, 
that it? And that's it for today. Okay. Got a lot coming up though. Okay. And the for Shabbos, let me include those. That's the would be the 16. Mm -hmm. Hmm. None for Shabbos. Okay, for Sunday, we'll get to Sunday on Sunday, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I was gonna say it sounds like they're davening next door. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Where are we? Kaf Lamatet, right? Amud Aleph. Yeah. Does that yeah. sound good? Okay. Yeah. So what happened? We ended the previous Amud. Right? Why? So Abai is going to take the position that when one is clearly married, the husband has, I won't say the upper hand, but he has a, can I say, a controlling interest, okay, in the use of the usufruct clearly. Is the same true of the Yabam? That's going to be the question behind our, dis our Gemara this morning, okay? So what happens? The Gemara picks up. Amar le Rava, says Rava. If the money, right, uh, is uh, bequeathed to her, or she inherits, right? When she is under the uh, authority, right? So to speak, of the husband, the kuliyama lo plige, right? Not everybody is not in, in any disagreement. Diado adifamiada, okay? That's certainly for the usufruct. In that case of that money that she's inherited, he has uh, more authority, right? Ella idi vidi the naflula kshehi shomerit yabam. But both, he says, this and this. In other words, money, okay, it could be that she, let's say, in, our, in the example we had, her ketubah, and the example of the nechassim could have come from the deceased husband. Okay, both of these came while she was still waiting for the yabam to act. Okay? So if that's the case, says the Gemara, Reisha, says Rabba, right? Delo avad ba ma'amar. Why is that the case? Because he did not make the, a ma'amar. He did not make his intent clear by carrying out a ma'amar. Sefer, the avad ba ma'amar. On the other hand, where we see that the attitude is different, <coughs> where there he did make a ma'amar. Okay, so there certainly since he is made a ma'amar, his clear intent is to yibum, and therefore clear intent is to marry her, okay? There is a strong, it would appear, according to Rabbah, that there is a, that there is a stronger, right, bond. Ukasavar Rabbah, this seems to imply that Rav is of the following opinion, ma'amar lebeit shamai, osev vadai arusa, that Rabbah holds that the, the establishment of the Ma'amar for Beit Shammai makes it a valid, a strong, I'll say, engagement, but a weak marriage, okay? Because you don't know, right? Vadai Asur Arusa, why is it a strong or valid engagement? Lidchot Betzara because it puts off any co-wife. She's now exempt, right? Visafek nisua, why is it questionable or the status of the marriage? Lachlok benichasim. In other words, compared to an actual marriage, he's still the yabam. And because he's still the yabam, even though they have the ma'amar and it's a strong zika, he cannot claim that he has a controlling role with any of the monies that she may acquire until he actually does yibum and takes her in. Okay? 
Itmar Mishmei the Rabbi Elazar, and it was said in the name of Rabbi Elazar, Kivate the Rabbah, according to the view of Rabba. The Itmar Mishmei the Rabbi Yossi, and it was said in the name of Rabbi Yossi, the Rabbi Hanina, the son of Rabbi Hanina, Kivate the Abaye, more according to the view of Abaye. So here again, the question is if the Yabam has the same power as the first husband, right? So what happens? Umi Amar Rabbi Elazar Hachi, did Rabbi Eliezer really say this? Vaha Amar Rabbi Elazar, but didn't Rabbi Elazar say as follows? Ma'amar <laughs> Beit Shammai, that the establishment of the Ma'amar according to Beit Shammai, a no konet elavit chot bilvad. Elsewhere, he said, it seems to only <coughs> fix or establish the, the idea that it will put off, defer any co-wife. It says nothing about the other element. Okay? So that's the problem. Buy it, Ema. Okay, Ipuch, so as the Gemara says. So reverse it. In other words, reverse who said what. Whether it was Rabbi Elazar or Rabbi, right? By Rabbi Yes. All right? So the Gemara says, furthermore, the bayat, if you want, I would say it. Olam lotipok. Don't change. Don't reverse. Right? Don't reverse. Right? Amarlach Rabbi Elazar. That Rabbi Elazar would say to us as follows. Ki amri ana de lo sagi la baget when I said before that it wasn't sufficient with, with, and I'm going to put in the word here, only a get, right? That in that case, okay, for that woman, maybe Beit Shammai holds that in this case, it's not a get is insufficient to end the relationship, okay? There also has to be chalitza, okay? But in terms of division of any property that she gained, okay, and doesn't acquire, mi amre, did they really say that? Amar Rav Papa says, Rav Papa diyuka de matnidi kavate de abaye, that the language, the exact language of our Mishnah <coughs> seems to coincide more with the view of a buy, right? But what? The Afal Gav Kasha, even though it's problematic. Why? Because our Mishnah said Meta, that she died. The Katani Nichasim Anichnasim Vyotsim Ima. And then it went on to say that it taught about that property that came in and went out with her. With her. Okay, right. My nichnatim. What do we mean when we say it came in with her? Umayyot's in. And what do we mean when we say it goes out with her? Lav nichnasim. Is it not that when we say it enters with her? Lereshut habaal. In other words, to a, to the uh, partial authority. I'm going to say of the husband that he has. Okay, even the Yabam, once he marries her, it would seem to be that he should have at least the same use of fruct um, utilage as the first original husband. And when we say that it leaves with her, in other words, that, it, that that property goes out of the control that usufruct goes out of the control of the husband and it becomes part of the inheritance that goes from the deceased wife to her father. Okay? The Afalgav, the Kasha Meta, says the Gemara, despite the fact that we say this is problematic in regards to the situation of her having died, Adamifage begufa 
Ulacharmita. The fact being that they argued about the, what I'm going to say is the total amount here for Gufa. Okay? That, and, and their argument was referring to after her demise. So the Gemara says, if that's the case, wouldn't it have been better lift the go or the payout? Wouldn't it have been better to have them argue about while she's alive and the control that the Yabam might have over the usufruct, if that's really what you were trying to compare between the first husband and the Yabam? Okay. The two low mide. And uh, more than that, there isn't much to say, so to speak. Okay, let's go on. Back to our Mishnah. Kansa, Arehi, et cetera, et cetera. Right? The Mishnah coming back that if took her into the house, what was the situation? Lamai Hilchata, what's the law there? Amar Rabbi Yossi Bar Khanina, he says. Lomar Shemegarsha Baget, just as we said together yesterday, okay, that once he takes her into the house, she's actually like his wife. And therefore, in order to end the relationship, he would need to give her a get. Umachzira Megarsha, Umachzira, right. Okay, and then if he wants, if he's an Israelite, a Yisrael, he can take her back. Right? You say that, that the Isra of Aisha Sach comes back. Once he, he married her, finished with the Aisha Sach. So now she's like a regular woman. Right. Right? And he can divorce, he divorces her, and if he wants, he can take her back. He's like Isra of Aisha Sach. Right. Right. He can take yeah. her back. Migarsha baget pshita, says the Gemara. All right? If she's come into his house as a, so to speak, normal wife, Right? Isn't it obvious that he would need to give her a get? It's possible, I might have thought to say, since the Pasuk is written that he takes her as a wife and performs Yibum with her, as written in the Amar Rachmana, says the Torah. Allah, okay, that it could be that that it's her status is like that earlier, okay? That would be the point. Bechalitza and beget lo. We might have thought then that still, if that was the case, she would need chalitza. That would work to break the relationship, but a get would not be a viable option, okay? Lo. So I said, Kamash Malan comes to teach us that's not the case, right? Namely, Machazira. So what about the fact that we say that he can then take her back? Pshita, isn't that obvious? Sagadata Chamina. It's possible again, I might have thought. The mitzvah, the Ramya Rachmana, Ale, Avra, I mean, Avda, I'm sorry. Avda. Right, that that the mitzvah that he was incumbent upon doing for Yibum, he's already performed, and therefore we may have thought, well, maybe in that case, the isur eishes ach falls back on him from the Torah. Right? Okay. Hashta tikkun ale beisur eishet ach. All right. That here, and that's exactly what the Gemara tells us. That here they would reestablish, or they the Isur would fall back on him. Kamash Malan comes to teach us that's again not the case. All right. Okay. Ve'ema hachinami, and I would say, what about here as well? Amar Kra, our pasuk said, v'lachalo leisha, right? And he takes her from as right his wife, right? So what happens? Kevan shelakha, harehi ki ishto lechol davar. And therefore, because he's taking her as his wife, based on the Pasuk, 
she is therefore considered his wife in a normal, like a normal situation, if we can put it that way. And therefore, that's why the get okay, is sufficient in that situation. And, okay, and they wouldn't need both get and chalitza. Okay. And he can also take her back. Right. Exactly. Okay, what happens? What happens? I just lost my place for a second. Right? Okay. Ubilvad Shetehek Tubata Vikhuli. Okay. So the Gemara now wants just to clarify, I believe, this part of the Mishnah. Who does this Ketuba come from? Okay. My Tama. Why did we have to say this? All right. Namely, hiknulo min hashamayim. All right, it's as if that uh, from hashamayim, all of a sudden he's got this wife. He didn't have brother, right? <coughs> what? The brother didn't. You know, he didn't choose her. Right. It, he it, I want right. It, I don't want to say fell in his lap, but <laughs> literally almost. Ve'i okay. Ve'i lidle right man harishon. And if there is not adequate property or money to pay the ketubah from the first husband, what happens? Takinu la misheni, that the rabbis established that then that second, the yabam, okay, who now took her as his wife, would have to pay the ketubah owed to her from the first husband. So we might ask the question, why, right? So it would not be so easy in his eyes to divorce her. Okay? In other words, know that if you decide, okay, that you're going to divorce her, not only would you, you're going to have to, in a sense, pay double, okay? You'd have to pay the ketubah from the first, and well, maybe pay the second. The ksuba from the first. The ksuba goes on the first husband's estate. Yeah, but if he doesn't have, then the second, second has to have to take over. He and has to. Okay, matnit in our new mitzvah, mishnah. Mitzvah begadol yaben. Here, remember, we had this whole discussion in our shiur. Okay, is the zika relationship only to the to one brother who is, let's say, first in line, or is the Zika relationship to the entire family? And how is the order? Okay, so, you saw, so in this case, we're going to see what happens. Mitzvah begadol yabeng. The mitzvah is for the, I'm going to say the, I'm going to say the oldest, in this case, to perform yibo. Lo ratza, if he chooses not to, Mahalchin al Kohachin. Then you gradually go down the list. Okay? Lo Ratsu, if they choose not to, Chosrin Eitzel Gadol. You come back to the oldest. Okay? Vaomrim lo Alecha Mitzvah. And you say to him, the mitzvah is O Ochalot o Yaben. Either do Chalitza or do Yibo. Okay? What happens? What happens now if that oldest brother says, Tala b'katan. Hey, let the, my younger brother uh, Chaim take care of it, right? All right? Or he gives another alternative, okay? And in other words, and wait till he gets older. Achi yagdil. Okay, right. Oh, begado, achi mi medinatiyam. Or he says, uh, I've got an older brother on a business trip now. When he comes back, let him uh, satisfy the mitzvah. Okay? What happens? Oh, he points it out and another brother who's a kolosh. Okay? He's deaf. Oh, Or he's uh, not mentally competent. In Shomim, though. Is the Mishnah. We don't listen to him. Right? We don't pay attention. But we say to him, Alecha Mitzvah. The Mitzvah is your obligation. 
either do chalitza or do yib. Okay, Gemara continues. Itmar. Be at katan v'chalitza gadol. Say you have the choice in the family between bia with a with a minor. Okay, and it doesn't mean with a minor. I think it means you have to wait till he reaches maturity. Okay. Or chalitza gadol, or doing chalitza with somebody who's already the above the age of majority, and a more adult. Pligi ba rabbi Yochanan the rabbi Yosher ben Lay. He's a younger brother. Younger brother. Okay. Younger brother. So which way do we go? Right. No, 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 it's not obvious. It's interesting that, <clears throat> okay, I did not see, you know, none of the comments seem to bring that up with Rashi. Okay? But it's an interesting issue. I, I think Rashi gives a his own well, spin a little bit. He says the younger brother. Yeah. Not, not the, the younger if, brother. If, if the, the younger brother wants Bia to do the, the Bia and the older brother wants to do Chalitza, that's the Gemara's question. That's the Gemara's question. I think Matthew read that into the Gemara personally. Okay? Because the reason I only say that is because since it dealt with before Katan and Ad Shayag deal, it would seem to me that when it refers to Bias Katan, it would be following that yeah, up. We're talking about a minor, and you're talking about an older brother and a minor. So why would you even go to the my younger brother, the minor? The way you go with whatever the older brother wants to do, he wants to do Halitza. Well, that's what might be the question. So is it, you go according to the age of the brothers, or do you go according, go according, according to the preference of the, the mitzvah? Over, the preference of the, that's going to be the true question. Whether Bia is preferred over Chalitza. Chalitza. Or, right? Okay, right. now we can pick up. All right, so that's the issue. Pligi ba Rabbi Yochanan ve Rabbi Yoshua ben Leib. Sorry. Chad Amar biat katana difa. One says that the Bia, let's use the of the younger is preferred. The Chad Amar Chalitza gadol adifa. And the other says the chalitza of the older is preferred. Okay, I still feel that this is the other. Okay, what happens? Manda amar biat katana difa, according to the one who says the younger with bia is preferred on mitzvah biibum, because therefore they're arguing that the mitzvah, I'm going to say, is really satisfied. Okay, preferably by you. And according to the one who says that Chalitza with the older brother, okay, is preferred. Why? Okay, why? Because if the older uh, brother, okay, does Chalitza, then the Yibum, then the, right, the Bia of the younger brother is worthless. What happens? Tznan. We learned elsewhere in a bright, in a mission. Lo Ratza, if someone does not choose to perform, Machzirin al Kol Ha'achim. Our mission said we have to go through the other brothers. My love isn't there for that not the case. <laughs> Maybe we'll understand that. <clears throat> Sorry. When he says he doesn't want, choose to, it means he doesn't choose to do Yibum, but he's willing to do Chalitza. Chalitza. Right? Ukatani. But we learned as follows. Mahalchim Eitzel Ha'achim. It says you go through the other brothers. Shmamina. Biat katan adifa. That would seem to imply that bia with a younger brother is preferred. Lo, no, says the Gemara. Lo ratza lachlots velo viabe. No, what it means is it's telling us when they said they refuse, they refuse to do one or the other. Or the other. Or chalitza, right? De kavata gabe ha'achin 
Lo ratsu. Okay, that therefore, according to the fact and what it said regarding the brothers, it said in general that they choose not to. Lo lachlot velo liyabem, implying that they choose neither to do chalitza nor to do yibum. Amai chodrin etz lagadol. Why then do we come back to the oldest? Okay, lemichvaye to force him. Okay, <clears throat> all right, so maybe we could say, all right, in other words, to force him to do the mitzvah, right? Kevan mm -hmm. de mitzvah ale de ramya. Why? Because we're saying that this mitzvah has basically fallen on him. The day day kaifinen. And therefore, he is the one that we. The force to do so. Now the Gemara picks up with another Mishnah. It's not. Okay. Tala bikatan ad deal. Maybe he hung it, so to speak, pushed the blame or the responsibility onto a, okay, a, a minor until he gets older, until he reaches majority. Now you see why I thought the other case was also in that in that scenario when it simply said katan, because it picks back up on that issue. Okay. Ain shomim la, we don't listen to him. Ve'i bayit ema katana difa. And if you're going to say a younger is preferred. Okay. And again, the question of waiting, if it's younger brother or younger waiting till he becomes uh, mature, right? Because he is willing to do the evil. And that would be the more preferable way to do the mitzvah. Vibayat katana Amai ain shomim lo. Why do we not no, listen? listen? Right? And that's what the Gemara is going to tell us. Nitar, let's wait. Dilma gadil umiyabem. Maybe he will then get, reach maturity and perform yibum. Ulatam, which would therefore again imply that that the uh, yibum on the part of the katan is preferred because yibum is preferred over chalitz. Ulatamech, but according to that line of reasoning, your reasoning, ubegadol ad medinat hayam. What about the fact that we said for an older brother or whatever until he comes back from his sea journey? But our Mishnah said, ain shomim lo that we don't listen to him. Am I? Why is that the case? Nitnar, nintar, let's wait. Maybe then he'll come and perform chalitza. So the Gemara's answer is, Ela, rather, Okay, we do not uh, delay, put off, the opportunity to perform the mitzvah. Okay, all right. Let's go to Amud Beis now. Eat the Amri. Those who say, right, the bia, with regarding to the issue of bia, right? Kuli amalo pligi the bia katan adif. Okay, that everyone agrees that is with the, let's say, younger, okay? All right, or as I said, flipping it, what? Okay. Keep plege, we agree. Bechalit sat kata, vahachi itma. They disagree with what happens if a, let's say, a younger brother, okay? Is, and what this is what, and here, vahachi itma, and here what they're talking about. Chalitzat katan, the chalitzat gadol, plige ba and Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi. Chalitzat, the part of a, let's go with it, younger, okay? And and chalitzat, and the part of an older, okay? Is the argument between Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi. What do they argue? Chad amar chalitzat gadol adifa. One says chalitzat on the part of an older, okay, is preferred. Bechad Amar, 
Okay, and the other one says, Ki hadadi, that they're basically the same thing. Okay, it's either chalitza by one or chalitza by the other. And the other. Right. Manda amar chalitza gadol adifam. According to the one who says that chalitza on the part of the older is preferred. Daha mitzvah begadol. Why? Because the mitzvah is on the older child. Okay, or the oldest all right? Brother. Right? Ve'idach. And the other one. Ki amrinam mitzvah begado. When we say the mitzvah is on the oldest, what are we talking about? Le'inyan yibum. That applies to the act of yibum. Aval le'inyan chalitza kehadade ninhu. But when we talk about the act of chalitza, they're equal. Okay. Now, coming back now to another Mishnah. Tznan, Ard Mishchidim said, Lo Ratsu, that they choose not to. Chosrin Eitzel Gadol. It said then that we have to go back to the older. Right. My love is it not the problem. Lo Ratsu Again, the same Ard say that when we say he chooses not to, it means to do yibum as opposed to chalitza. Ukatani chosrin eitzel gadol. But then it teaches that they come back to the ushmamina chalitza gadol adif. From this we would learn that it would appear that chalitza on the part of the older or oldest is preferable. Lo. No. Lo ratzu, when they say they choose not to, lo lachlot v'lo liyabem, neither to do yibum or to do chalitza. Right? The kavate gabe gadol. Okay, and this seems to follow the view of what about the responsibility for the older or the oldest. Lo ratza lo lachlot v'lo liyabem. He chooses neither to do chalitza or to do yibum. Why then do we come back to the oldest? To force him. Again, we force it upon him. Right? Because the mitzvah has fallen upon him. That's the reason that we force it. Okay? Now, Tashma. Listen to the following brighter. Tala bigadol medinat hayam. Let's say he tried to pass it off to another older or oldest brother who was away on a business trip. Ain shomin lo. We say we don't listen to him. Ve'isa gadatach. And if you're going to think, chalitzat gadol adifa, that the chalitza of an older or oldest is preferable. Am I ain't shomin Why don't we listen to him? Right? Nintar, let's wait. Dilma ate v'chalitz. Perhaps then when he comes, he'll do chalitza. Ula But according to your line of thinking, bekatan ad sheyigdal ain't shomin lo amai. If that's the case, then when it comes back to a minor, okay, or a younger brother, right, until he reaches a majority age, okay, or whatever, all right, why don't we listen to him, right? Nintar, let's wait. Dilma gadil miyabem. Perhaps then, when he reaches a majority age, he will do yibo. Again, clarifying which is preferable. Okay, and then we've got in parentheses a little something here. Inami, or perhaps, ate ihu umiyabma. Maybe he himself will come and do ihu. Elekol shahave mitzvah lo shahinam. Again, we say, when the mitzvah is available, right, we do not put it off. Okay, now we're going to get to a uh, new peace, okay? And this is based on another Gemara in Bechorot, okay? 
I assume art scroll cites the place. Bechorot okay. 13a, right? Okay. Tnan Tata. It was taught there. Mitzvat Yibum Kodemet le Mitzvat Chalitza. That the mitzvah of performing Yibum is preferred or ahead of the mitzvah of Chalitza. Okay. Now, as we continue with this text, okay, it's going to be interesting when we think back to, I think it was that first Mishnah at the beginning of the Perak, okay? Where it talked about, we had that whole discussion of why was the language of that Mishnah, why did it refer to Chalitza first and Yibum second, okay? So that's why I wanted to just remind us, okay? So what happens? Bari Shona, I'll translate that as originally, Shahayumit Kavnim Lashem Mitzvah, when their intent was the pur for the purpose of fulfilling the mitzvah, Achshav, okay? In other words, in that case, that's when Yibum had preference. Achshav, She'ein Mit Kavnim Lashem Mitzvah, now, however, that they don't always do it for the pure sake of the mitzvah. Amru, they said, mitzvat chalitza kodemet le mitzvat yibum. That the mitzvah of chalitza is ahead of the mitzvah of yibum. And by the way, just remember, we, we talked about in that first whole parak whether there was a single mitzvah, okay, and yibum was preferable, and the chalitza was simply the flip side if they choose not to, okay? Lower status, mm -hmm. I hate to put it that way, but you know what I mean. Or whether each was a mitzvah in and of itself as a way to, to end the zika, okay? So here we get the language. Mitzvah chalitza kodem la mitzvah yibum. Now, Amar Rav says, Rav, and notice what he says, Ain kofin, we don't force him, okay? We just got a whole through discussion about the oldest and they don't take this one, they don't take that one, we force the oldest. Now we have another point where Rav himself is saying, we do not force him, okay? Now the man said, the brother says, I'm a, I, I can do it, Moshe Mitzvah totally. That's why. Oh, I don't know. Let's see. Yes. That ain't we don't force to do chalitza if one of them can do it the shame mitzvah. That's what that's what the aim kofin to do the chalitza where it could be done the shame mitzvah. We don't force him to do chalitza, or we don't right. force him to do yibum. That's no, we, we don't force him to do chalitza where the yibum could be done the shame mitzvah. All right, we'll see. I'm not uh, okay. Uh, so what after the Kame de Rav, when they came before Rav, Amalaho, he said to them as follows, mm -hmm. right? He buy it if you want chalos. Do chalitza. He buy it, If you want to do you okay. Tala Rahmana. In other words, the choice. Has been given to you by the Torah. Because of the Pasuk says, if the person does not choose, right? But if he chooses, he may choose to do Chalitza, he may choose to do Hebrew. And Rav Yehuda also held that they don't force him. Okay? Midaitkin Rav Yehuda, Begita de Chalitza. And ad, as established by Rav Yehuda, I'm going to say in the text of, of the document for Chalitza. Okay? Namely, Ech Plonit Bat Ploni, how. Uh, the lady, daughter of so and so, Akivat Yat Ploni, who brought 
the Mr. So-and-so, Plony Yabama her Yabama, Kadmana Labedina, and brought him before the court, right? Vaashta Modinhu, and they and we identified him. The Achva Demitna me Abba Mihu, that he is the brother of the deceased through the same father. I'm going to put it that way. Okay. Va'amrele, and we say to him, O Tzivita liyabem, yabem, if you choose to do yibum, yibum. Ve'ilo, and if not, itla la raglech diyamina, okay, extend your uh, right foot, ve'itla la ragla diyamina, all right, he extends his right foot, v'shart sine, and remove the shoe, me'al raglaihu, from off his leg, v'yarakt ba'anfahi, ruka, de mitchazia labeidina al ara, and spit, spittle, I'm going to say towards his face, okay, such that the court can see it there on the ground. Okay. bar avia. What does he say? Misayim ba. He would conclude this mishmei de Rav Yehuda in the name of Rav Yehuda with its following. Vaakrinhu madichtiv, and I would read to him what is written. Besefa oraita demasha, in the Torah by Moses, namely Ashtamudinhu. We say. Identified him. Plige, but there's an argument by Rab Acha the Rabina between Rab Acha and Rabina. Chad Amar Be'edin, that he is identified through the use of witnesses. The Chad Amar, a filu karov, a filu isha. And the other says he can be identified by a relative or even the woman. Vihilchata. Galui milta ba'almahu, and the law is that this is a uh, let's say a um, recogn a, a, an unknown factor as to who he really is. Vafilu karov, vafilu isha, and even then a relative or a woman who normally remember a pasul Okay. Barishona, we're back to here now. Shahayu mitkavnin l'shem mitzvah. Originally, when their intent was to fulfill the mitzvah, mitzvat yibum kodemet le mitzvat chalitza. <clears throat> the mitzvah of yibum preceded the mitzvah of chalitza. Va'achshav she'ein mitkavin l'shem mitzvah. But now that they do not intend purely, all right, for the sake of the mitzvah, amru. Mitzvat chalitza kodemet le mitzvat yibum. That mitzvah takes precedent. Chalitza takes precedence. Okay, over yibum. Amar Rami Bar Chama, Amar Rav Yitzchak. Okay, as follows, right? Chazru Lomar. Then they came back and they said, Mitzvat yibum kodemet le mitzvat chalitza. No, later. They said that Yibum takes precedence over Chalitza. Amar le Rav Nachman by Yitzchak. So he's challenged and he says, Akshor dare meikara savre la ke All right. Can we say that previous generations improved as it was originally given the thought of Abba Shaul? Okay. Well, the Vaso. The concern before was that they were not doing it for the mitzvah. Right. They had other intentions. So you said, do you think people got better? Better, exactly. Did people get better so that now, as if the now they are doing it for the purpose right. of the so mitzvah? Now parrot starts. Right. Before, right. So that's happens. Right. Me'ikaris ka'abashom. Right. What happens? Namely, the Vaso, savre la kirabana. And then afterwards, they thought like the rabbis. The Tanya, Abba Shaul Omer, he says, Hakone said Yavam Tov, 
l'shem noi, one who uh, does yibum because of her, her being beautiful, u'l'shum ishut, or simply to make her his wife, u'l'shum davar acher, or for any other reason, ki'ilu pogea ba'erva. Okay, it's as if he is, is uh, encountering the potential Torah Isur of Erva, of Eshetach, right? V'karov ani be'enai liyot havlad mamzer. And I consider, okay, the possibility, I'm phrasing it that way, all right, that that progeny could be considered then the status of a mamzer. By the way, in, uh, in the Israel Times newspaper yesterday, there was a major article about on Mamzerut, okay, that somebody was challenging the court uh, in a situation of that because they, the couple got married before the waiting period uh, of after a divorce, okay? Anyway, uh, in Israel, all right, Velad Mamzer, the Chachamim Ramrim, but the sages say, Yevama Yavo Aleha that the Yavama is supposed to have relations with her mikomakom, regardless. Man tana laha de tana rabbanan. Okay, but who is it that taught according to the teaching of the rabbis? Yavamo yaleha, yavo aleha, mitzvah, that having the relations yibum with her is clearly a mitzvah. Shebet chila, okay, when she was single or pre-married status, the woman, right? Haita alav beklau heter. She was then in that status, generally, originally pro permitted to him, okay? Ne'esra, she became forbidden to him when she married the man's brother. V'chazra v'hutra, okay? The brother dies. And therefore, for the mitzvah of Yibum, she's become re-permitted, if I can use that word. Yachol tachzor lahetera harishon. It's as if she comes back to her original status of being permissible. Talmud Loma, therefore the text teaches us, Yavama yavo aleha mitzvah, that, that the Yavama can have relations with her, and that it is a mitzvah. Well, only for a mitzvah. Not for for the purpose reason. of the mitzvah, right? Man Tana, who is it that teaches this? Amar Rabbi Yitzchak Bar Avdimi. He says, Abba Shaul he. It's Abba Shaul who taught this. Vahachi Kama. And this is how he understood it. Yevama Yavo Aleha. That the Yevama will have relations with her. Mitzvah that for the purpose of the mitzvah, that originally when she was single, pre-married to anybody, she was permitted, right? Okay, what happens? If he wanted to marry her for beauty, he brought her into his house and married. Konsa wanted to have to make her his wife, married him. Ne'esra, when she married, however, his brother, again, she became forbidden to him. Chazra v'hutra. Afterwards, when the brother dies, she returns back to becoming permitted. Yachol tachzor lahatira harishon. It's possible that she returns back to her earlier status of being to, permitted. Talmud Lomar, the Torah teaches us, Yevama Yavo Aleha Le Mitzvah, that the Yevama has relations with her for mitzvah. Now, we'll go a little bit further. Rava Amar, he says, and then we'll finish up. Rava says as follows, Afilu Tema Rabbanan, it's possible to even say that this follows the view of the Chachamim, this Chazal. Vahachi Ka'amar. 
And this is what they mean to say. Yevama yavo aleha, mitzvah, that the Yevama has relations with her for the purpose of the mitzvah. Shet betchila, originally, haita beklal heter. She was single, pre-married. She was permitted to him. Ratsa konsa, if he chooses, he may bring her into his house and marry her. Ratsa e no konsa, if he chooses, he doesn't bring her into a, his house and marry her. Ne'esra, she marries his brother. Ne'esra, she is forbidden for him to him. Chazra vehutra, on the death of the brother, she comes back to being permitted. Yechol tachzor lahatira harishona. It's possible we might think that she returns to her original permitted status. Ratsa konsa. If he chooses, he can bring her into his house. Ratsa e no konsa. And if he chooses, he doesn't. So the Gemara asks here, Ratsa e no konsa. You say if he chooses, he doesn't? Implying, doesn't he have then the requirement of yibum? Ha agidabe. He is bound to her. Right? Or she is bound to him. In other words, you have Zika there. Bechde tipok. Are you saying that it's simply the purpose to let her go, to let her release? Okay. Ella Ema. But rather, I would say as follows. Ratsa konsa. If he chooses, he can bring her into her house. Ratsa choletzla. If he chooses, he can do chalitza with her. Talmud Lomar, Yevama Yavo Aleha Mitzvah. Okay? It's preferable to do Yibo. Right. And they're for the mitzvah. And that's, I think, the best place to start. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Rabbi Green, have a good yantif. Good yantif. Oh. Yeah. What, Sam? After he does uh, Yibo.